Hi, I do really hope all is great with you. I'm Marco Santambrogio, Associate Professor at Politecnico di Milano, and today we are going to start together a terrific journey, or if you prefer an introductory journey, to FPGA-based system design. Technology progress induced paradigm shifts in computing. The invention of programmable microprocessor in 1974 has resulted in the evolution from the pure hardware-based computing to the software-based computing. Today, we are also entering in a new era, an era in which computing systems are no longer seen as monolithic, high-performing, power-hungry, single-core system, an era in which reconfigurable devices, such as FPGAs, make it possible to have custom-designed high-density hardware in an electronic circuit, with the added bonus of having the possibility of changing it whenever there is the need, even while the whole application is still running. The flexibility of having custom adaptable hardware in an application is the factor that has determined the popularity of FPGA devices in a broad range of fields. Configuring an FPGA means changing its functionality to support a new application, and it is equal of having some new piece of hardware mapped on the FPGA chip, having to implement a new functionality. As we all know, the free food was yesterday, and the versatility and reprogrammability of field programmable get arrays comes at a price. Only a few years ago, the algorithms that could be implemented in a single FPGA chip were fairly small. More recently, though, FPGAs have reached a size where it is possible to implement more than a reasonable portion of an application in a single FPGA. <laughs> well, not only portion, but in some cases, the entire application itself. Moreover, Nowadays, we can find FPGAs in the cloud, like in the Amazon F1 instances, and this is exactly the kind of system we are going to target during our classes. A further improvement in FPGA technology allows modern boards to reconfigure only some of the logic gates, leaving the other ones unchanged. This partial reconfiguration is of course much faster in case only a small part of the FPGA logic needs to be changed. When both these features are available, the FPGA is referred to be partially dynamically reconfigurable. This is a short overview on the topics we are going to discuss and present during this course. I do really hope we'll have the chance to go through them together.